Assalamu alaikum, guten Morgen, good morning. I welcome you all to the second webinar of the webinar series planned for Virtual Texpo 2021. Today's webinar will be formally opened by His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Faisal, the Ambassador of Islamic Republic of Pakistan to Federal Republic of Germany. He will be followed by Mr. Ansgar Lohmann, head of the CSR Department of Stick Textilian and Non-Food Germany. Kik is the largest discounter in Germany with about 3,500 stores around the globe and plans for further expansion. He will be talking about upcoming due diligence laws and their impact on business. Then Mr. Ijaz Khokhar, former chairman and chief coordinator of Pakistan Ready-Made Garment Manufacturers and Exporters Association will introduce Pakistan's ready-made garment industry and its strength. Finally, Mr. Matthias Thais, Council Honorary Council of Pakistan and Chief Executive Officer of Thaima Group will talk about his experience for doing business with Pakistan. And then I will request Mr. Bas Rauf, DG TDAP, to say a few words. Finally, we will go for the question answer session. People who are interested in asking questions may inbox them to me to save time so that I can ask the questions on their behalf from the guest speakers. Uh, over to you, Dr. Faisal, sir. Uh, uh, for arranging this, uh, 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 Sir, just a moment. I'm told to stop for a moment. Sir, okay. Mute. Okay. Thank you very much once again, and uh, uh, thank you for arranging this talk. Uh, I'm told uh, on the uh, it will also focus on the supply chain law, the new supply chain law that Germany is coming up with. Uh, since last year, as you have seen, COVID has completely changed our lives and businesses uh, as uh, they have been running for centuries. And we are grateful to the developments in technological arena for arranging now this fantastic webinar in which we are all sitting thousands of miles apart from each other and talking to each other, exchanging uh, views uh, about uh, all, all things. And uh, we can try at least to match uh, to some extent, uh, uh, the cooperation that we would have in a in a physical on-site uh, expo, which is not possible uh, because of Corona, and it is a reflective of the resilience uh, of the mankind that we have bounced back, mashallah, and uh, things are improving everywhere. Whether it is Pakistan, whether it is uh, uh, like for my German friends. We opened up the colleges, universities, schools, everything yesterday in Pakistan. Uh, yesterday was the first day. And for my Pakistani friends, Germany is thinking of lifting the lockdown on the 14th uh, or maybe extending it a week or so further. But so far, the date is, is the 14th and maybe the discussion is on the 10th. So we, we are looking forward to, to uh, more interactive uh, meetings and physical presence, uh, uh, hopefully very soon. The vaccination drive is, is uh, picking up steam both here and uh, for my German friends, we had some uh, 0.5 million vaccines that arrived from China yesterday. Foreign Minister received it and the process is, is really going fast now. And we hope that, that we will be able to, to uh, at least counter it or balance it out if not completely eliminate it. Uh, Germany, as we know, is the hub of international trade fairs, but unfortunately, we have seen that after April 2020, no physical fair could have been held. Pakistan's exporters are heavily reliant on German trade fairs to showcase our products to the world. Sadly, I haven't seen the trade fairs because I arrived in April and they stopped happening, but I, I hear uh, very um, um, colorful uh, stories of uh, trade fairs and hundreds of uh, Pakistani exporters coming here to showcase their products, whether it was in pharmaceuticals or textiles or agriculture products or anything else. So uh, 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 it, it remains imperative that we uh, build upon the action that has been taken so far. Texpo Pakistan is normally a biannual affair and buyers from all over the world visit Pakistan to grace the occasion and establish links with world-class suppliers. Due to COVID this year, physical Texpo was not possible, but I have to appreciate the efforts of TDAP to hold Texpo on a virtual platform. Our commercial council has done a fantastic job on this also, who is the host of of uh, this uh, webinar. 
Uh, this effort will not only provide a new avenues for the exporters, but also build TDAP's capacity to effectively use the digital world for the trade-related activities. Germany is not only the fourth largest destination for Pakistani products, but also at global and especially EU level, it has turned into an economic might. One of the most open economies in the world, Germany thrives on trade and has always had long-standing bilateral relations with Pakistan. Germany is also one of the leading countries when it comes to enforcement of labor laws. It has pioneered many legislations in EU on these issues. All such laws affect the suppliers in the third world who have to adapt to the changing legal environments. And lastly, I take this opportunity to appreciate the Kik Textilian, which has always shown commitment to Pakistan. Kik has not only been sourcing from Pakistan, but has been at the forefront of corporate social responsibility initiatives in Pakistan. After the unfortunate incident of Baldia town, Karachi, Kik contributed a lot for the welfare of the affectees and their families. They have been trying to educate Pakistani exporters about legal requirements in Europe regarding the work environment, safety and welfare of employees. Today's webinar is a continuation of that effort. I thank Mr. Lohman, the head of CSR department, Kix Textile in Germany, for sparing his time for the webinar. Our exporters will certainly benefit from the talks that will be held in, in this um, webinar. I thank you all. I've been very brief. I want you to really discuss the substantive issues. Thank you very much, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind and short talk, which was very brief and enlightening. Now, I would request Mr. Lohman to continue with the presentation, which is the main scheme of the webinar. Over to you, sir. Yes, thank you very much. I will just share my, my screen and hope it will be possible that everybody can see this. Yes. So, a very good morning from my side, dear Mr. Ambassador. Dear Excellencies, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to give me the opportunity to talk with you about um, a special topic in Germany, which is the upcoming supply chain law. Before I will start, I want to shortly introduce myself to you. So Ansgar Lohmann, I'm the head of uh, CSR globally at KIC. I'm working for KIC since eight years now and caring about the development of environmental standards, of social standards, fire safety and building safety. And thank you very much to Mr. Ambassador to give this brief introduction already to the, about the activities which KIK is currently running on the Pakistani market. Normally, nowadays, I am in Pakistan. So I'm always traveling two times per year to Pakistan in the months of January and February. I'm very sad that I'm not able to do that by now, but I'm convinced that uh, the, the flights will res resume maybe in the second half of the year so that we can come back and have a personal meeting with everybody present in the call. So with that, I want to start my presentation with a deep dive. What you can see here is a land map of uh, different continents and different countries who were already publishing or are short before introducing supply chain laws. What you can see here is that um, in Europe, there are many legislations already on the way. The uh, most recent I, one. I would like to interrupt Mr. Lohmann, your yeah. slide, you have to move it to the next one. It's not moving. We are still on the first slide on the screen. Ah, because, okay. Can you see the second one now? No, we can't, sir. It's still on the first slide. You have to put the slideshow. I think you have to turn on the slideshow. Yes, I did. Sorry. Or maybe click on the second slide. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I can see the second slide. Okay. Others can see the second slide, please. No. No, you can't. I'm sorry. Just one moment. I give it a restart. <laughs> I 
Can you see the slide now, the second one? Yes, we can see it, sir. Thank okay, you. Okay, perfect, great, okay. Then I will leave it in this in this models. So here you can see a land map of all the different countries and continents where a supply chain law has been published or is short before. The most recent one is the one in Switzerland, which is concentrating on child labor conflict minerals and the so-called non-financial reporting obligation. The first law which has been published in Europe was the French law. This was the Loire de Vigilance, which has been published in March 2017. And um, what you can see is that there are different legislations, but no harmonization. Now Germany will come up and I will introduce to you later on what are the very details in this upcoming law. But what I can mention to you already, that an uplift of a supply chain law on the European level is uh, also intended by the European Commission and a European supply chain law is expected to be published in the second quarter of this, of this year. Um, the USA, they have got two different laws regulating human rights and social standards. This is the California Transparency Supply Chain Act and the Customs Border Protection Rule, concentrating on forced labor and on child labor. And um, from my um, experience, the law has been made use of a lot now in the recent part when we are talking about imports coming from, from China. So to summarize the European government initiatives, we can see France, we can see the Netherlands, they are coming up, Austria will come up, Switzerland as well, and short before we are talking about Germany. So let me explain to you what was the front runner, what was the front runner of the German draft law. This is the so-called National Action Plan for Business and Human Rights. In the year of 2019, there was a survey which has been conducted by the foreign ministry of Germany. And a second survey uh, did follow in the year of 2020. Um, the content was that in Germany, we have got about 7,400 company, companies with an employment rate above 500. So that means um, out of these 7,400 companies, about 2,200 companies received a letter um, sent by the German government. And out of these 2,200 companies, roughly 400 companies responded in each of the surveys. So that means in each of the two surveys in 2019 and in 2020. And the main pillars and the main elements of the survey was asking the companies whether they have a so-called policy statement respecting on human rights. So that would be a human rights policy. The second pillar, is a question about risk assessments. So that means, are companies already dealing in Germany with conducting a risk, a risk assessment throughout their sourcing countries? The third pillar, from my point of view, the most important one is the, um, is the pillar of um, defined appropriate measurements. So that means, what are the concrete measurements after having the risk assessment um, fighting against human rights abuses? Fourth pillar is that companies should report publicly um, if it is on their website, if it is combined in their financial year report, or maybe even in a sustainability report. And the last pillar is that companies are motivated to raise a complaints mechanism throughout all of their sourcing countries. When you now see the second page, here I am demonstrating to you what are the results. It is important for you to know that the German government was saying, and this was the agreement um, of the coalition when the coalition has been founded back in September 2017, the coalition ag agreement was saying that if less than 50%, 50 percent, five zero, 50 percent of the companies which were conducting this, this uh, survey were answering that they are not dealing with human rights and social standards throughout their sub supply chain, then the German government will act and they will introduce a supply chain law and the, government and the German government will also, in addition to that, uplift this idea to the European level. The answer, honestly speaking, is, is quite sad. There is an interval between 13 and 17% only consisting of the compilers and accordingly, 
between 83% and 87% the non-compilers. So 50% was the expectation set down by the German government, but the positive responders came only up to maximum 16.5%. This is the result, and this survey has been conducted by Ernst and Young together with the Foreign Ministry of Germany. And as a result now, Germany took this survey in order to initiate this supply chain law. Um, these are the very little details here about who were the compilers and who, and who were not the compilers. I will skip this slide because I introduced to you everything so far. So what, what we can see here now that there are three ministries involved establishing or working out the supply chain law. One of the ministries is the Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, the responsible minister is Dr. Gerd Müller here. And the federal minister of labor, Mr. Hubertus Heil, plus the um, Ministry of Economics, Mr. Altmaier. So all these ministries are involved now to work out on this supply chain law. The main orientation is uh, being given on the French law, on the Loire de uh, Vigilance, which has been published uh, back in the year of 2017, and the OECD guidelines as well. Important to know is that there is a second draft now in Germany, which has been published before Corona. So that means this came on the 10th of March 2020, but the front runner was an initial draft law, which has been leaked by the um, Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development back in February 2019. The third draft law is expected to be published now, maybe in the months of February. By now, nothing has leaked through, but we are very excited to learn more about that. The main, the main sentence, what is being expected by German companies is that they should offer protection for workers against avoidable and foreseeable risks. And how the law is being structured, this is what I will explain to you now, um, when, it, when it comes to the point that the draft law is in the final stage, then all coalition parties are involved in the debate. Um, the last possibility to give in or to bring in the law into the parliament is May 2021. So that means still we have got four months time in order to pass this law um, within this legislative period. Um, there will be a new election of the German government in the upcoming uh, September 2021. This is the reason why the last possibility is May. Um, what is important to know is that our Chancellor, Mrs. Angela Merkel, also supports the law um, in the main pillars, which I explained to you before. And um, so far, the law, and I think this is important, yeah, this is definitely one of the lessons learned so far, the, le the law covers the entire supply chain. So that means down the different tier steps from the um, weaving and knitting stage to the dyeing stage to the ginning stage down to the cotton field. If it really comes like this, this is still unclear, but I think we need to take it into regards that uh, the German government uh, wants to go down in its supply chain law um, down to the cotton field and uh, different measurements and different processes need to be installed already now by the companies. When we are now discussing about the law, I'm dividing the scopes to four different scopes. The first scope is the so-called personal scope. Here we are discussing about in Germany, what should be the correct company size, which is falling under the law. Currently, um, we are talking about 500 employees per company, there are some voices in different ministries who are voting for 5,000 employees in order to restrict the number of companies to be brought into the law. Um, most likely is that we are talking about 500 employees in total. There should be a transitional period, like always, after a law has been published. Here we are talking about a transitional period of two to five years. So that means it is possible that the year uh, that the law will be set alive already in the year of 2023. Um, what is quite clear already to all the different ministries involved 
is that there will be a obligation to publish an action plan and a progress report and that should be done on a yearly basis. So that means if companies are prepared well enough in order to create sustainability reports, they should be on the safe side. And the five pillars, which I explained to you before in the national action plan, this will be the basis and this should be, and this will be the main pillars also of the upcoming supply chain law. Moreover, we are also talking about a European law and also the European law also takes into regards these five very important pillars, like the risk analysis, the prioritization, the prioritization of risk, the define of uh, the definition of appropriate measures to establish a complaint mechanism and to have an appropriate monitoring system as well in place. And I skip to my next slide. You will see the so-called material scope of the law. So that means which content will be covered by the German supply chain law. For sure, it will be human human rights. Um, NGOs are also claiming, and I also know that members of the German government are also claiming about bringing in environmental issues as well. That means like energy efficiency, renewable energy as well, which is a very important topic now. Um, waste management, water management, chemical management should also be comprised by the by the law. Um, also supporting in Europe, the idea of the Green Deal, um, which has been introduced by uh, the EU Commissioner Mrs. Uh, von der Leyen. Um, the law should comprise workers' rights, corruption. It should be in alignment with the UN guiding, guiding principles and OECD guidelines as well. And what I said to you before is um, there is also a probability that the whole supply chain, that means all the different tier levels down to the cotton fields, will be also covered by that. Also here in the material scope, we are talking about a so-called whitelist. A whitelist means are there some countries, maybe in Europe, maybe in, on other continents in the world, which will be excluded from the due diligence on human rights. If you maybe talk about a country like Germany, um, where garments are being produced or Austria or Switzerland, maybe it's possible that such countries will be excluded from the obligation to conduct human rights due diligence. And the last and the third chapter is the so-called enforcement mechanism. So which institution makes companies in future responsible and liable for their doings in different sourcing countries? This can be reached by so-called civil liability, means that managing directors that may be owners of a company should be held personally liable for their doings uh, in different sourcing countries. Um, it's not quite, quite clear whether a law will contain such a clause. Um, will there be maybe a government enforcement mechanism? For example, if companies are committed to publish sustainability reports and for whatever reason they are not doing, doing that, will there be an administrative fine? Will there be a punishment, a financial punishment? This is also not, not clear. Um, uh, what is coming up in the law, will there be a so-called in-house enforcement mechanism such as a compliant officer who permanently needs to check the, um, the factories in, in foreign countries such as Pakistan. And um, so these are the four elements which might come in the upcoming supply chain law in order to get a control mechanism installed in the headquarters so that means in each of the headquarters of the companies, plus uh, um, social auditing, environmental auditing, let's say own people on the ground in the different sourcing countries in order to check whether the standards are being adhered to by the factories and by the companies itself. The last scope I want to talk with you about is the so-called user friendliness of the law and the so-called ease of use. There are lots of, by now, there are lots of indefinite legal terms inside. So to bring as much space of interpretation, um, it is not quite sure whether this law should concentrate, let's say on standards and certificates like GOTS, like, B, like BSCI, like Blue Sign. So it is still unclear whether uh, certificates, international certificates are appreciated and uh, honored. 
will there be a safe harbor clause? What is the safe harbor clause? This is nothing else that if you are a member of a multi-stakeholder initiative, for example, like the Accord on Bangladesh, for example, like the Partnership for Sustainable Textiles, will this be honored in order to bring down your um, liability, which is then only concentrated, let's say, on negligence and on intent? Maybe there will be a business simulation before the law comes into operation. So that means, will there be some case studies where companies like us will be taken on their hand in order to demonstrate what is exactly ex expected um, by the companies and what should be definitely done in working together with the different factories in the sourcing countries. But what all the ministries declared already is there is no need to create additional bureaucracy for the companies in Europe. So coming to the part of implementation and to give you some practical some practical examples about how KIC is preparing and what KIC did towards working the supply chain law. I would like to say that we are more or less well prepared regarding the upcoming stipulations, the upcoming clauses inside such a law. So what, what we did, we were publishing our human rights policy um, back in December 2017, this human rights policy has been published on our website, has been published by our CEO, and this is a strong commitment of kick towards the supply base in all of the sourcing countries. The second pillar we also tackled so far, so we were conducting a risk assessment. Um, that means we were risk assessing our sourcing countries, our suppliers and our factories. Um, and we are going down the tier two stage already. So that means the tier two stage, here we are con conducting audits, we are conducting ESG ratings, so environment, social and uh, governance ratings. And we are also using the blockchain technology in order to define the different actors down the supply chain. And we do not want to stop on the second tier level, but also going down to the tier three stage. Here we have very good experience already done with Pakistani, um, garment factories and dyeing units and weaving units. We are getting a very big support here from the Pakistani factories. And I can, and I can also, and I can only encourage everybody to take part um, in this uh, stage here. Complaints mechanism, when you remember that, that was also part of the National Action Plan survey. We are a member of the Accord in Bangladesh and um, connected to that, we are committed yeah, to support the complaints mechanism in Bangladesh. Myanmar will, will follow now, and the ones who are um, supporting our initiative, our building safety initiative in Pakistan, also already know that KIC is short before um, introducing a complaints mechanism for the factories producing for KIC in Pakistan as well. Sustainability report, we are publishing sustainability reports since the year of 2010. We are ongoing doing that. The next one is going to be published in December in this year. That is number one, we, we are fulfilling our reporting obligation. And the second level is the Partnership for Sustainable Textile. One time per year, KIC is committed to report um, or to publish a so-called progress report here. And everybody who is interested in that, everything is published on the website of the Partnership of Sustainable, of the uh, sus Sustainable Textiles or on our own website. Um, coming to concrete measures and implementation. So what is KIC doing? We were launching a building safety initiative in Pakistan in 2017, supporting the second, the third pillar of the upcoming supply chain law. We are operating um, five different schools in, in Bangladesh, which makes us the biggest uh, private school operator in Bangladesh, as well as we are providing education to 3,000 children there in Bangladesh. We are working together with the UNHCR organization in Turkey in order to give um, Syrian refugees support on residence permit and work permit. Um, auditing companies who want to work with KIC must be legally liable for their doings. So that means if a company applies to work with, with KIC, they need to sign a so-called liability clause for KIC as well.
climate goal um, of the European Green Deal. As I just explained to you, we are a member of the Accord in Bangladesh and making factories and making all of our garment factories safe here. And last but not least, we are a member of the Partnership of Sustainable Textiles and a member of all of the working group and all of the sourcing initiative and countries initiative, which has been set down by the um, Partnership of Sustainable Textiles. Um, it is very important that uh, global companies and not only companies in Europe, in Germany, also factories, suppliers in Pakistan are dealing with digitalization. So that means we are communicating um, with all of our factories all already uh, via a blockchain standard. And this is very important for us to know um, what are the different sustainability standards which are in present there on the side of the suppliers. We are conducting social audits, we are conducting in environmental audits, and here we are making use of the blockchain technology. So I can only motivate, um, and this is one of the main emphasis of my, um, of my presentation here, technology is absolutely key, digitalization is key, and this is the basis in order to reach suppliers' development, human rights commitment, and a better work in the future together with all of our factories. Um, so to, to summarize, what is the impact? And this is, um, and this, uh, uh, is following the title of my presentation. So what is the main impact on global business relations? There will be a special focus on human rights as never be before. I would like to say some of the companies are acting as a front runner since many years, since decades already, but human rights is being put in, into the focus very, very strongly now. There will be, according to our opinion, a very special focus in, on environmental issues, definitely starting on energy management. So that means suppliers and factories in Pakistan should definitely work on energy efficiency, um, on renewable energy as well, and on implementing solar panels on their factory rooftops in order to um, fulfill the second pillar as well. And very important is it is not only it is it is um, it is not enough and not sufficient to only concentrate on the first year level. We are of the opinion, and we are very sure that the law will go down to the different tier levels. So factories should be prepared here in Pakistan to identify who are the different actors on the tier three stage, on the tier four stage, because these are the actors which need to be published in future um, and which, which need to be nominated to the buying companies in Europe. Let me take the outlook, let me take the perspective on the, in the future. Um, it has been an announced that on the February 10th, so that means in nine days, there will be a cabinet review ag again on a new version on a supply chain law still by now nothing has leaked through by uh, the members of the government so that means companies in germany are very much excited um, on the content of a supply chain law and now we are very um, excited if the law will be passed in this legislation period um, nevertheless also on the european level um, the European Commission is also working on a supply chain law. Now the question is, which initiative is the fastest one? Is this the German one or is this one on the European level? What the Europeans were um, publishing in the media is that they will introduce their law in April 2021. Let's see which institution will be the faster one here. And with this slide, I want to um, close my presentation and I want to uh, express my big thanks to everybody listening. And thank you very, very much to Mr. Ambassador and to the excellencies, to you, ladies and gentlemen, giving me a chance and talking about the supply chain law. And now um, I want to hand over to Mr. Matthias Theis um, taking the next part. Thank you very much so far.
Nem o Rony, né? Mr. Yaskuka, né? You are the next part. Uh, I, I think the, uh, the, the network of uh, uh, Khaja has been disrupted. So I, I request the next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Ijaz Khokar Saab, to say some words about this. Over to Ijaz Khokar Saab. Yes, <laughs> it's okay. Perfect. Everybody listen now. Yes, yes, we can listen, sir. Everybody listen. Okay. All right. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Good morning to all German friends uh, who are uh, joining this webinar. And good afternoon to Pakistani participants uh, taking part in this webinar. On the behalf of Pakistan Ready-Made Garment Association, I'm very thankful to the host of this webinar, Mr. Khaja Khurram Nainsab, organizing this webinar on the sideline of first virtual Expo 20. 21 being held first time in Pakistan today. Also, I'm very grateful uh, the role of TEDAP who are organizing this first virtual show in Pakistan uh, for the textile industry. Basir Saab, thank you very much for joining this uh, webinar. And uh, I congr congratulate the whole TEDAP team who are organizing this webinar. And I'm very uh, confident that this show will be uh, very fruitful for all of us. You see. I'm also very grateful to the Excellency Dr. Mohammad Faisal Saab, the Ambassador of the Republic of Pakistan in Germany, for his opening remarks. And our speaker, Mr. Lohmann, head of the CSR department, Kick Textile, Germany, I really appreciate this is a very, very comprehensive uh, detailed information which he explained in his presentation. Uh, we are confident that uh, this would be a very supportive document for our industry. And uh, definitely, Prigmia, we will circulate them to all our members uh, this important uh, presentation. Mr. Matthias, uh, I'm also uh, thankful to you. I mean, uh, who, uh, putting his efforts to organizing this webinar. Really, we appreciate your efforts because uh, we know your uh, uh, affiliation with the Pakistani peoples. And uh, thank you very much. Now I will introduce Prigmia, Pakistan Ready-Made Garment Manufacturing Export Association, the largest value-added stakeholder of Pakistan, established in 1984, and having a three offices uh, in the major city of Pakistan, Karachi, Lahore, and Sialkot. We have about more than a 70, 730 members dealing in woven garments and knitting garments. The mainly product we, our member produce is uh, denim jeans, sports wears, all type of sports wear, work wears, martial arts uniform, and uh, like uh, hoodies and the uh, track suit, etc. Pakistan export, total export from uh, Pakistan to the world is at the moment around 6 billion US dollar. Our Prigmian, we 
we have a goal now to take the Pakistan garment industry on the next level. How is that? How we can do that? We are going to introduce our member to please start the production of those garments which are not being produced in Pakistan. So we are conducting an intellectual session to our members for diversifying in the new type of garments which are globally demanded, especially garments by using the technical and functional fabrics. At the present, we are just producing a uh, regular garments, but not in a technical fabrics, not a functional fabric garments. So our goal is to motivate our member to please uh, to jump in, in that. And within the next uh, two years, we have a very high goals for achieving this uh, uh, new gar new type of garment, especially the winter sports. At the moment, all in Europe, the winter sports garments are made from China, made from Vietnam, made from Taiwan. So we have a chance, we have a skill. Our factories are fully equipped, you see. Only the problem is we, had, uh, we are uh, lacking in the availability of the raw materials. So we have to organize the raw material supply chain available in Pakistan. And then we can, I'm sure we can from 6 billion to, we can jump to 12 billion US dollar within, in, uh, within two years. So this is it. The main, as our task is to upgrade the knowledge of our members so that they can also produce the garments out of the recycled, which are environmentally sustainable. At the moment, the trend of the producing recycled garments is the top priority. It is the, all the major uh, buyers, they are demanding the garments out of the uh, recycled material, recycled cotton, recycled polyester, and other things. As I said to you that uh, we are setting up a training center. We are conducting a, a knowledge-based sessions, training sessions to all of our members that uh, there is a dire need at the moment to diversification is a very important. So we have to get ready, I mean, to produce the material which are not available in Pakistan, we can import, we are uh, requesting our government to make a soft import policy for the export purpose. And they are very supportive. Our prime minister, he is the, at the moment, he everywhere quote, the textile industry is booming. And he assured us that uh, he will do all the, uh, he will uh, remove all the bottlenecks related to the garment industry because the garment industry is the major uh, employment uh, provider in the countries. And we have a, all the youngster uh, population, more than a 47% is the population of the young peoples. And they intend to come uh, in a uh, garment business. And uh, all we are also promoting the new entrepreneurship business, you see. Uh, regarding the German, we, the old growth in Pakistan, German goals are very very high because they are very professional is participating, They're visiting the different fair, which are really, which help lordly wish that uh, to restart the expos as early as possible when the
एजाज साहब आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही आई थिंक आपके कनेक्शन में प्रॉब्लम आई है आई ऑल्सो हैड द प्रॉब्लम विद माई कनेक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी कैन ऑल्सो फेल अस so uh i think uh, we can leave mr jaz here because uh, there is some problem with his uh, uh, internet connection we are unable to hear him so uh, i would request now mr thais to present the perspective of dealing with pakistan of his business with pakistan because i know even the kick gentlemen the kick buyer team they call our uh, exporters to dubai and don't visit pakistan for the buying so i would like mr mathias to uh, say, Throw some light on how is it to visit Pakistan and how you can deal with Pakistan, and hopefully Mr. Uh, Doman will convince his buying team to visit Pakistan in future. Over to you, Mr. Mathias. I agree, complete. So good morning to everybody and good afternoon to Pakistan. Uh, and uh, special thanks to Anska Doman for the perfect presentation. And uh, I think it is very, very important. And uh, special thanks again to Ansgar Lohmann because he is not only the chief of the department for CSR, he is also the managing director for Kick Bangladesh, and he shared this presentation in first with us, with Pakistan. And uh, this is uh, where we have to think: what is the new way? What is the future? And what is coming? and when we have this information this is uh, perfect for our suppliers that we have this information and uh, it is also important for gsp plus to become it again it is not that it's clear that we have it always yeah we have to work for this and all this points what ansgar lohmann told us is very very important so situation in germany um, it's not easy everybody knows that the stores are closed from november to now and there is no sales for uh, winter closes and the spring summer closes are coming so they need the money to pay the invoices so and we become problems and uh, i think to make uh, business with the uh, germans we are uh, maybe uh, sampled by denims yeah the stock is full so what way can we do we need new styles and we need new stories like uh, loungewear so all the producers for normal t-shirts and jogging clothes whatever can work uh, in a way what is between suits and between jogging so it's named loungewear this is also a big big part so and uh, for the suppliers in pakistan if you I give you a sample if you will work with kick the first step is that uh, there is a sourcing company in pakistan who visit the suppliers and the factories so and then the next step is that anska is coming with his team and he checks the factories and all the other social standards and when he makes the traffic light to green then it is connect with the buyer and you are right um, commercial consular frank for that uh, the buyer was in the history always in uh, dubai where they become the presentations but i was in the last years many times the head of the german delegation and we visit the expo we was on the horti expo for 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 fruits and other things and uh, there was nobody to un feel unsafe yeah and this is the most important me message today that everybody is welcome yeah and you will feel safe you feel safe in cr code what is important you feel safe in fazalabad in islamabad in karachi in lahore uh, and you will see beautiful people in a beautiful country so and uh, what i think is that we have a, a good cooperation between germany and pakistan there are companies from german side like polo motorbike they make her leather jackets around 40 years in pakistan yeah adidas is starting in uh, pakistan with uh, the sportswear so we can make from a cheap level yeah about prices yeah like kick uh, to go in a high level like tommy hilfinger or uh, maybe boss so it is a big chance for everybody um, and i will show you one thing what i find in a in a supermarket yeah in a discounter this is from lidl and you see yeah they have the green button this is a german sign yeah you see god's certification the carton is fsc standard 
Yeah, and you see the fitting is from uh, other companies. It's made in green. It's Ökotech standard. So, and what I will show you, this is the future. Yeah, and uh, we must find if we will work with Germans in the next month yeah, to become a lot of orders, new styles that the customer understands that the old styles from last year, this is not the fashion. And the magazines that push new styles that we become also orders. And uh, again, Mr. Lohmann, thanks for all information what you share with me in the last five years. And uh, we make something also with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And I hope that we can transport this information in the Pakistan market, not only in the textile sector, it is also interesting for uh, other areas like for the food, uh, for the people, basmati rice or for mango people, whatever. So um, I think it is a big, big help for us that we can make a lot of business together between Pakistan and Germany. So, and I wish for all people a good time, stay safe and healthy, and for TDEP especially, uh, a very successful textbook. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthias. Now I will request Mr. Pasit Rao to say a few words before we move to the question and answer session. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. It's a great pleasure for us, uh, and especially on the behalf of the top management of uh, Trade Development Authority of Pakistan. I express my gratitude to all the participants uh, who, who have joined this webinar. And the basic purpose of this webinar was to interact with the, with the business community of Pakistan as well as the business sides of the Germany. And as the, Mr. Lohman and Mr. Matthias has given very insightful information regarding the textile industry and the, regarding the future business orientations, how the new designs and the new uh, 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 experiments with the can open the market for Pakistan. And I especially thankful to the His Excellency Dr. Faisal, um, the ambassadors to Germany, uh, Khaja Saab, our uh, very hardworking uh, commercial counselor, trade and investment officers to Germany, and Mr. Lohman, who has given a very good presentation, and Mr. Matthias. And especially the uh, 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 Khaja Saab, uh, who was giving uh, very useful information about the Ready-Made Garments Exporter Association of Pakistan. With this, I uh, again express my thanks and grateful and that's for joining this webinar. Thank you. So now the house is open for question and answer. If anybody has a question, please raise your hand, please. Uh, so we can ask G. Kokasa, please. Okay. Uh, 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 I have a uh, question to Mr. Lohan of page 14. I just like to make a request to him that uh, what sort of social support program they are conducting in Bangladesh. Is it possible because there is a education model in Bangladesh the refugees and other things. So these are the social assistance program. I mean, uh, can they run in Pakistan as well? And uh, second thing is the regarding the environment issue for the renewal of energy, for the saving of energy. And uh, in the new government city, which is uh, Prime Minister announced to be established in Sialkot, we are going to plan, we are planned to build up a green factory over there. So in this case, uh, what is the comments of Mr. Lohman? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Kuka, for these for, for these two questions. So let me let me answer the first one. So you were asking me if such a education model, which we are currently running in Bangladesh, can be transferred over to Pakistan. Yeah, I would I would like to say gen generally yes. I would I would like to say 
Um, by now, we are concentrating in uh, Bangladesh in order to in order to expand and and to open um, more and more schools there. Yeah. So that means the the first focus was to um, was to open schools, and the second focus is now to bring in some qualitative measures. So that means in order to make the education much more better than ever before. So that binds some resources. But I would like to say, yeah, let us keep in touch about that, yeah, and um, what are the possibilities in Pakistan as well. I was personally also in contact with the GIZ office in, um, in Lahore, uh, talking about that, how to um, get in touch with that. And yeah. I can say this is an interesting point. Secondly, um, the question on environmental uh, because issues. Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. The second question, Sorry? Mr. Kuka. Oh, pardon? Yeah. I said this the the second question coming to um, the environmental issues um, with a special focus on energy, yeah. So what are the requirements? The requirements are yeah. number one, energy efficiency. So that means that factories should be motivated um, to take a look throughout their total production processes in order to see where they can reduce the energy consumption. And the second uh, issue is that we want to motivate all of the factories to um, put on their rooftop solar panels in order to produce their own energies and to make, and in the future also to follow, let's say a green building standard. So that is a multi approach what KIC is doing. We were yes. starting with optimizing social standards, then making a deep dive into building safety. And the third pillar is the environmental issue. So from that point of view, I'm very much interested in order to see the green factory for sure in Zialcott, which can act as the role model throughout uh, uh, all of the factories in the Pakistan and maybe to act as the best practice example there. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Lohman. For yeah, our we are already very much connected with the GID, Mrs. Uh, Romena. Yes. And uh, I think uh, the, if you list our Pakistan Redimant Garment Association can participate with you all with the, uh, these things but you are uh, uh, running the program in Bangladesh. Uh, we will welcome that uh, all type of uh, that, uh, mm, your, uh, sir, uh, I mean, activity, we can launch in Pakistan with uh, both with the mutual cooperation. We are ready. I mean, Prigbya is very much uh, welcome uh, with, uh, with the running all the programs, uh, what you are running in Bangladesh. Thank you, Jasper, yeah. for the uh, ready willingness you are showing, and I think we can coordinate with the cake to uh, make this program a uh, practical and reality in coming days, along with GIZ and others. Any other questions, gentlemen? Okay. Uh, I think if there are no more questions, uh, uh, we can. Uh, uh, Hi, sir. No, you have one uh, more. Okay. Okay, one okay. Uh, one uh, last point one last point was left in my presentation i very much like to give appreciation to the german embassy in pakistan german embassy is in uh, pakistan was the first embassy out of all eu embassies who granting a long term business visa to our exporter which is helping a lot to secure the business. So this compliment I must pass through uh, to the German embassy. They are the first embassy who start giving a five-year multiple visa. Whether other embassies, the EU embassies, they are giving a short-term visa. So this is a very helpful for our business uh, to make a frequent travel for the business, uh, frequent business travel to uh, any European country. So compliment to German uh, nation, German, all the German peoples. Thank you. Somebody want uh, to ask a question? I, yeah. Yes, I have a question. I have a question, Mr. Benedict is my name. 
Come again. Hello? I have a question for Mr. Lohan. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, yes. My question, it talked about the um, about the enforcement mechanism uh, to be put in place, you know, uh, why stemming the impact of global business uh, relations with particular reference to Pakistan. Now, uh, it talked about the civil liability, government enforcement, in-house enforcement, compliance officer within the company. Uh, I think, think, or what does it, uh, or rather, what does it put in place for the enforcement to take place in respect of each of these uh, conglomerates? And that's the in-house civil liability, compliance officer, what, are the measures to be put in place in respect of the enforcement to be effective? Well, that's Thank you. Thank my you very question. much, Mr. Lohman. Your turn, please. Yes, yes. So, thank you very much for this question, Mr. Benedict. Um, yeah, so that is a very good question, I would, I would like to say. Um, so, if it really comes to the point of civil liability, I think one of the concrete effect is that companies like us need to take a very careful look, a very careful look at their factories in order to see whether they are, let's say, almost 100% complying to our social standards, environmental standards, human rights, and building standards. So to answer your question properly, that might lead to the point that some of the factories will be sorted out of the pool and that, let's say, only the best might survive, yeah? Um, if it is like this, that uh, companies yeah, would then, let's say, leave sourcing countries, I would like to say that this is definitely not the intention of the lawmaker in Germany. I think we should better follow the rules, stay and behave, rather than to leave a country. Um, I'm honestly speaking quite doubtful whether the law will be provided with civil liability. I think um, there will be some softer regulations inside um, in order to strengthen the idea of developing the factories, of installing capacity building. So I think it's much more better to um, have long lasting business relationship and to learn from each other on trust on cooperation than just to leave a country in order to be theory that factories might not fulfill the idea of civil liability. So from that point of view, I think I can bring you down here um, let's let's really hope, yeah, that uh, uh, um, that the law uh, is not that tough, yeah, that companies will be forced to leave factories or to leave countries. I cannot imagine that the lawmakers will go like this. But one message should be clear: factories should no longer wait now and uh, uh, and 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 to wait what is inside the law. I think factories should definitely prepare themselves now to work on their social standards, to work on their environmental standards, to make the factory safe from fire safety point of view. By having that, I think this is all what you can do. And then you are more than well prepared um, uh, regarding the upcoming stipulations in the law. If that is I have, the answer I to have your one question. question. Yes, thank you. Thank you, I got it, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Law. Do we have a time for one more question? Introduce yourself and please go ahead with the question. We are running short of time. We are already late. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we already met in Expo in Dusseldorf. My name is Imran Meher. I am CEO of uh, Abnoy Enterprises in Bonn, Germany. So I already worked in uh, Fair Trade International and worked as a, as a sustainable consultant and helped Pakistani. Uh, uh, produ uh, producer groups, farming groups to attain sus uh, sustainable certification for their rice products like fair trade certification. Now I come to the point. I got to meet with the uh, auditor from India from Sustec Solutions. He had been visiting, he had shown me his five passports with stamps, to Pakistani visas, and he had been visiting different textile factories in Pakistan. And he said, no country on earth can beat uh, in quality and standard uh, for Pakistani products. So the thing is this, 
I have been living in Germany over the past 10 years, and I had for like big shopping malls like Karstadt or Gladia Kofov, I would only see Pakistani footballs and uh, the socks uh, and, and none other Pakistani made in Pakistan products like uh, garments or, or shirts or, or, or et cetera. The thing is this, uh, my question to both Pakistani and German um, honorable speakers that how can we do we can we develop or have we developed a short term strategy like next three to five years? Can we have a mechanism to uh, you know to import much more products made in Pakistan products? And can we see such products here in German market? And especially in the Corona time, we do not have uh, we are not sure how long will this lockdown go prolong. Uh, can we uh, have they developed the mechanism for online e shops like Amazon or eBay something like that? Thank you very much. Thank you, Imran, sir, for your question. I think you have been visiting wrong stores, maybe, because uh, I know Kick, Kick is sourcing from Pakistan. I know uh, Hugo Boss last year got first consignment from Pakistan. They have started ordering Pakistan, which is the high-end product. And uh, there are uh, things, uh, Texel, uh, we have a growing market. While our competitors have lost the market in garments in last six months, Pakistan has uh, Grown to Germany, Pakistan exports. But anyhow, I would like uh, Mr. Uh, Matthias to add to it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I don't know when when he was in Germany, but uh, in the young fashion area, you find always made in Pakistan. It is by uh, Taco, it is by Kik, it is by New Yorker or other places. So in textile. Um, I think we must push um, anything what is produced in Pakistan and uh, in the sportswear, as Mr. Ias Koka told us, to make something that is a problem that we need the fabrics. It is polyester, it's coming from China. So we prefer in first companies where the yarn is make, it's made in Pakistan, you know, the fabric is made in Pakistan, and then also the ready made garments. Uh, and I'm sure that we will push it and we hope that the exhibitions will be open very fast in Germany again, because by home tax, we have 300 exhibitors only in the home textile area. And uh, we have the ISPO for the sport goods. And we have also sourcing fairs, uh, also it's Paris. Uh, it's not Germany, it's France, but it's only one hour from my place, where it's a big, big sourcing area for the Pakistanis. Uh, and I'm sure if we follow the way uh, what Ansgar Lohmann presents us today, um, we have a big chance to enter the German market and make more exports. All inter sports, uh, sportswear being exported from Pakistan to Germany, uh, all the sporting wares you see made in Pakistan already been there. And many major brands they produce in Pakistan. I think a gentleman might be not seen that. Uh, right store, he must uh, visit. Thank you, Jasab. I think uh, I can understand the concern of Mr. Uh, Maher because he wants to see more uh, visibly Pakistani goods, but it is a competitive is market. Good. We are we are gaining market share, and uh, hopefully, we will gain more in future. Next question, please. Thank you, sir, for your insight. Thank you very much. I will try to visit the right stores from now on. <laughs> Please, next question, please. Anybody else? No questions? Okay, uh, Ijazab, you talked about uh, the specialty uh, fabrics and your focus on that. Tomorrow, we have another webinar with the uh, help of uh, Masse uh, Dusseldorf, which is on PPE, personal protective equipment, which is another growing segment, I think. It would be interesting if your people can participate in that because we also have the president of the uh, Personal Protective Equipment Manufacturer Association of Germany who will be uh, guiding us on the future of this uh, industry. I, sir, I, I just need a one minute to add up one important point I left sure. in my presentation. Sure. Sure. Uh, I want to give a message to the German technologies technical technical technology companies that Pakistan is a 
in a future, in a coming year, two years, going to be a very much consumable, uh, they can consume the technical fabric, functional fabric, and the German entrepreneur, they can set up a, their unit in Pakistan because if we have a very attractive uh, board of investment, uh, uh, overseas policies, investment policies, which I think they can have a benefit because they have a tax holidays over there. And our government is objective is to reduce the minimum import bill. So if they set up their unit <laughs> as an individual or joint venture in Pakistan, I think for a functional fabric and a technical fabric, there is a big demand going to be raised in the coming days. So I will invite all the German companies, if they are interested, Prignia can assist them to find a right partner if they want to have a collaboration. We can recommend a, a, a partnership, uh, uh, I mean, uh, entrepreneur from Pakistan, if they want to set up their individual unit in the uh, economic zones, uh, which are going to be all over the, uh, along with the uh, uh, China Belt Road, this is a good opportunity. I think, um, uh, Matthias, if you please uh, highlight this uh, opportunity to the German entrepreneurs, so it would be a good for win-win situation for both of uh, uh, countries. Thank you. We're back on this. Uh, uh, thank sir, you. I would... I would like There's to take only 10. Okay, please, please. 10 Go seconds ahead. only. Last question. Yes, only 10, okay. only 10 seconds I will take. Thank you very much, Mr. Jasa, uh, for your nice suggestion. We are an IT company. We are specializing in artificial intelligence and also machine learning. And over the past six years, we have been working projects with Deutsche Welle, Google, and Facebook. So maybe we can contact with you and also to further initiate these steps. Yeah, we are ready to co coordinate. Any yeah. other questions? So yes, okay. yes. Uh, well, okay. another okay. question. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Adia from Hamburg. Uh, we had a presentation with the embassy uh, six weeks before for the investment, exactly what uh, Mr. Cocker told. Uh, we have uh, companies here. They want to not invest in money. They want to invest in projects. It means they will install and uh, their companies, their machinery according to need. So this uh, presentation I have already given to Ambassy in, in Germany. Uh, your good name, sir, please. Would you like My name is Ali name? Askar. I'm from Hamburg. You were invited Ali in a meeting, but you could not join us. <laughs> uh, Ali, Askar, Ali Saab, you know I am stationed in Frankfurt. I think yes. you have my emails available with you and my numbers also. If you can just inbox me so we can contact uh, each other because uh, we used to have a full-time officer in uh, uh, Berlin, which is not available, unfortunately, right now. So uh, I will be more than willing to help you with BU and all other formalities. And Ijazab is a personal friend. Uh, we can always coordinate with him. Very good. Thank you. Man. Actually, I was waiting for the uh, feedback from Pakistan and from the embassy because I give the all data, all information, which uh, different field of industry so uh, that was to Mr. Kamran and uh, your uh, attache for first actually. So I can ask them, they will continue with you, please. Okay, thank you. I will contact them also. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, all of you, Mr. Lohman, Mr. Ijaz Koker, Mr. Thais, Mathieu Thais, for a very informative webinar. Tomorrow we have a webinar on the personal protective equipment. I would request all the participants to join to have an insight in the growing market of personal protective uh, equipment and protective wear, because this is uh, a new, uh, it's not a new field, but it has gained much importance in the recent uh, times because of uh, this corona uh, Hello? Uh, pandemic. And I will also request my friends to please join in time. Uh, people have been pouring in till 10.30. The webinar started at 10 o'clock. This does not be, uh, give a good impression to the uh, presenters, and you may have missed a very important uh, part of the talk in that. Tomorrow, our webinar will start at 1.30 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time, 9.30 uh, 9 a.m. 
German Standard Time or the European Standard Time. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Basit sir, for making this all possible from Pakistan. And uh, I hope that tomorrow we will meet again and uh, we will have some more insight into the German market in a different segment. Once again, I am very much thankful to Mr. Lohman for spending his time and for all his commitment to Pakistan. And I believe that we can build upon many new initiatives as suggested by Jaz Khokar Saab. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Stay blessed.